we're gonna go out into the world and pick up my wing stop. I really need to finish this green juice, so I'm gonna do that. Oh man, what's wrong with my camera lately? Carry out only. <laughs> we secured the bag because my bowl demanded that we get wing stop and not in and out. Decided to look nice for this video because it's been like a couple days. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. So, oh god, you just saw my PJs. This video, I kind of wanted to touch on a topic that maybe even people who aren't necessarily new grad nurses are experiencing now just because of all the craziness that's going on with COVID-19. That is a pre-shift anxiety. For me, I am a new grad nurse. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jasmine. I've been working in the ER since October 2019. I've been on my own since January 2020. So I've been working as an ER nurse on my own for four months now, almost. Um, and my pre-shift anxiety really started out, it was even, I think it got really, really bad near the end of my rotation. I think it was daunting to like let off on your own. It's not just me now who's experiencing it. I feel like with everything going on with the COVID-19 virus, it's kind of hard for everyone to kind of anticipate what's going to happen because we never know when there might be an influx of people who may be impacted by this virus so i feel like now even not just me as a new nurse is having like anxiety about going into shifts but also like the older nurses um with everything rolling out in the er like um us um staffing like the covid tent or even um having all these screenings it's kind of it's kind of hard not to be taken aback by everything. The statistic was every for every five Americans, um, one is asked to stay home and the other four are asked to um, go back to the workforce. The other four are people who are not just in the healthcare field but also are in essential working spaces like the gas stations, the grocery stores. People in healthcare are the front lines of the covid um i don't know like team i guess they we're just trying to manage and kind of minimize going back to my pre-shift anxiety things that i would usually get pretty scared about um i think it's gotten a lot better when i was first let off and off my orientation we went straight into the flu season which made it really really hard for me because i remember we would show up to work and we'd be in code chi for those of you who don't know what codes are, so code alpha is like, oh, we're like pretty mellowed out. Code beta is like, we're busy. Code chi is like, oh, busy as hell. Um, I have no other words for it other than that. Um, and that was really hard for me at first because I think for one, I went straight from day shift straight into, so I would be day shift with my preceptor and then I went straight to nights. And nights are way different because sometimes you do have like a downtime period, but then you also have way more limited resources. You, you have way less nurses at night than you do during the daytime. So for example, for me, when I would get stuck in an IV or if I tried to, like two times already and I don't feel comfortable trying a third, I would try and pull another nurse. The problem being is when we're under staff and we have like no one else to help us, you have to figure out a way to troubleshoot that and either get the IV yourself or have someone who knows how to do ultrasound IV or someone just to take a look. You can call lab to draw their labs, but you still need an IV to give them medications. And that would cause me a lot of anxiety because the voice is like hard because I knew everyone else is so busy. When you have a COVID patient, technically on our floors, they're supposed to be one-to-one. But for some reason, we had run low on our resources. So those paper masks, those white helmets that you see us wear, um, we had very limited amounts. So essentially, because I had one patient who was, was being rolled out for COVID, I was essentially like the COVID nurse. So I would have, I remember I had three patients at a time, five in bed 
20 or whatever and it was like all spread across the er so i felt like i was running back and forth that was like stressing me the fuck out um but something that i did take away from it was when you're the covid nurse you have to do essentially everything yourself so ekgs blood draws medications everything um and then you do the swabs of course like the covid swabs and that's the biggest thing because when you stick those covid swabs up there and you like swab it out they like usually sneeze or cough it's like um initiating like the cough which is why we have to wear that paper thing because it's everything's on you and no one else can help you in there so that's why i was like freaking out because i was like i felt like i was like the weakest link in the bunch so i was like why the hell am i doing this <laughs> because i was like how am i gonna ask someone if i need help um, even though it's airborne and contact precautions um droplets is like also a big issue i remember for one of my patients i think this is after like the third or fourth time when i was having those three patients at the same time i was, felt like i was going crazy i think the hardest thing having those patients was the fact that okay i was new already and it was hard for me to manage to time manage and to do that kind of stuff um and one of them was supposed to be a transfer but then they didn't transfer them and all these big issues but can you imagine like being a new nurse and you're having all these patients but on top of that now we're donning these like brand well they're not brand new but like PPE that we rarely ever use <laughs> so that and to don them on and off takes forever so I felt like I learned to really time manage I like learned the general orders that they would order just because by the end of my shift I had done so many <laughs> Of these COVID patients orders so um, the only thing that I didn't do was x-ray obviously because I don't know how to do the x-ray but EKG blood draws um, medications there would be usually be two medications we would usually give them one of them was recephin and the other one was azithromycin the recephin usually runs over 30 minutes so I would do their blood work and IV um, and then I would give them any like pain medicine. We usually give them Tordal because a lot of people complain about body aches um, or morphine. We, either one goes. And then we would give the Recephin. Okay, and I would hang the Recephin after like, and they usually order like cultures and lactic. <sighs> and I'm like really jumbled and all over the place. But I would hang the Recephin so that while I am like doing all my cultures, like I'd have to swab their nose swab their mouth or whatever um it would be running already so that like by the time that i'm done with it the 30 minutes that it would be running over i would get to hang the azithromycin right after because you can't really hang two antibiotics at the same time obviously because if they get a reaction you wouldn't know which one they're having a reaction to um so yeah that's one thing and then i just like learned to like group everything like you can go in there and like do everything all at once which was a little bit daunting to me at first because I remember um, I remember the very first time that my preceptor was like handed me all the equipment and was like okay go do their labs do their medications and run their troponin I remember her like giving me all that at once and I would get so much anxiety about that I was like and I think another thing was she it was like an hour before shift change in my head I was like I don't know how I'm gonna draw the blood start the IV do the medications but now after I had like those people I remember because it took me like 30 minutes to do everything so I would IV them blood draw meds some of them I needed to straight calf I'm pretty proud of myself because I was like you know like before it used to freak me out but now I'm just like what I think the biggest thing for me was like I in my head I was like you know what I'm just gonna do the best I can and that's all I can do because like what is there to lose anymore <laughs> at that point I was just kind of like done I guess but I think having that mindset and putting my mind at like a little bit of ease made me a little bit more calm and able to think more clearly because I wasn't as frantic i mean i'm always frantic but you know you know everyone keeps saying like 
oh we're such heroes in the ER because of everything that we're doing but truly those people who are working through the crisis in Italy those people are your heroes I don't feel like I should be called that because although I do work front lines because I'm in the ER I don't think I'm that I don't want to say important but I don't think I'm doing as much as those people in Italy so I just want to applaud those people anyone who's on the front lines there because it's literally insane what they're going through right now because of I don't know if anyone's seen it but those are the bubble helmets and they're not I don't know patients in North Italy wearing bubble like apparatus on their head to help with breathing okay so that right there in the red is Italy and this right here this big spot is China isn't it freaking mind-blowing that it traveled that far those two are the top two I'm just in awe dude I'm just in awe which I understand why we're in this whole crisis or like this lockdown mode but yeah I totally went off on a spiel but anyway that's my whole spiel on pre-shift anxiety um I guess I could okay some things that I've taken to kind of take a step back for one I show up early so that I can kind of like settle into my space it's kind of like the way I take yoga and I try to like settle into my space I also do have like a playlist that I play to help with my anxiety where is it? Oh my gosh. This is my playlist, but obviously you can, if you're religious or not, you have your own playlist. You can follow my playlist if you want. It's called When You Need Jesus. <laughs> um, and I listened to that before. I also use this like calming, it's um, what's it called? I think it's like eucalyptus essential oil and I don't know it helps me calm down um and then another thing I just like take the time to like think and pray because at the end of the day you do as much as you can and that's all you really can do you're not God yourself and you don't you can't you know fix everything you just you're just doing the best that you can and that's my biggest thing I'm a little bit more scared to go into work now because I don't go back until Wednesday and today is like Friday? It's Friday or Saturday? It's Friday. <laughs> um, but who knows if we'll still have supplies by then. Who knows if the virus will get worse by then. But anyway, thank you for listening to my spiel. Um, what is everyone else's thoughts? I know a lot of people's clinicals, some of them are still going on. I don't really know why. Hopefully they stop doing that. Um, and another thing, what about other people? I'm like so, so curious to see like what people are doing like on med search floors or like, especially in the ICU. I want to see what like, what in the ICU. I know in my hospital we haven't had like any crazy cases. But I want to know what or like how it is on other units. So if you are working at the hospital and front lines and you have any COVID patients, comment down below. As always, stay safe everyone and I will see you in the next vlog. Mm -hmm.